Professor Dave and Chegg here. We know the basics regarding line notation, which is how we will represent molecules visually. So now it's time to tackle the vocabulary. If we're going to talk about molecules, we need to know their names. And since organic molecules can get very complicated, this is actually not such an easy task. Let's learn how to do this now. Beyond just knowing the names of specific functional groups, or common groups of atoms that can be found on a molecule, we need a system by which we can take any molecule imaginable, whether real or hypothetical, and give it a very specific name, such that any other chemist could read that name and draw out the precise molecule in question. This system will require rules, so that everyone is in agreement about how to go about doing this, and those rules have been constructed by the IUPAC, or the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. These rules will take more than a moment to learn, and it may seem like a headache at times, but the good news is that you only have to learn this system once. When you're done, new functional groups will fall into place with what you already know, and it will grow more and more intuitive over time. In order to introduce the first handful of rules, let's look at the most basic type of organic molecule, which are called alkanes. Alkanes are a type of hydrocarbon, and they specifically have only single bonds between the carbon atoms, so there are no double or triple bonds between the carbons of an alkane. These can be depicted very easily with the line notation we already learned, and with no other elements aside from carbon and hydrogen, they will just look like some zigzags, whether straight chain or branched. The first rule we must learn is that we have to be able to communicate how many carbons are in the molecule. This will require the memorization of a few prefixes. At the absolute least, we must memorize these 10. Once you have these, they will be used over and over again, so they won't be hard to remember. Let's quickly go over them now. Meth means 1, eth means 2, prop means 3, but means 4, pent means 5, hex means 6, hept means 7, Oct means 8, non means 9, and dec means 10. These are prefixes, so these are the beginnings of molecule names. If we are describing alkanes, we will use the suffix ane. So if we are considering only straight chain alkanes like these ones, we just take the prefix that corresponds to the number of carbons in the molecule and add the suffix to get methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, nonane, and decane. Now let's see what happens as we slowly add complexity to the molecular structure. Let's take this branched alkane. The first thing we must do is identify the longest carbon chain. Here it's easy. We have a five carbon chain and this one carbon alkyl substituent, which means a one carbon group projecting from the main chain. Since the main chain has five carbons, this is a pentane. But we can't just call it pentane, we have to communicate the presence of this additional carbon, and since it is a one carbon alkyl substituent, we take the prefix meth and suffix eel from alkyl, and we call this a methyl group. We would not call it a methane group because methane is a discrete molecule. This is just a part of a molecule, so it's a methyl group. A two carbon substituent would be an ethyl group, and so forth. Next, we have to be able to communicate where this group is located on the molecule. To do that, we have to number the parent chain. That's these five carbons numbered one to five, and we have two options. We could number left to right or right to left. We will choose the direction that gives this substituent occurring soonest or on the lowest numbered carbon possible. So we number left to right such that it occurs on carbon two rather than on carbon four. This rule, just like the rest of the rules we will learn, is totally arbitrary. It is not designated by any natural phenomenon. It is just a rule we made up and all follow so that we will all agree on how to name this molecule. Now that we have all the information, let's put it together. We always start by listing any substituents with a number indicating where they occur. Here that will be 2-methyl. Notice that we have a number, then a hyphen, then the substituent with no spaces. Then we list the parent molecule, pentane. 2-methylpentane. Easy enough, right? Okay, let's step it up a bit. Here is another molecule. Again, the first thing we do is identify the longest carbon chain. Be careful, it may not always be the chain that is immediately left to right. There could be a longer one, so make sure you find the longest chain possible. With this one, if we start down here, we can get an 8-carbon chain, so this must be an octane. Now let's identify the substituents. We have a methyl group here and an ethyl group here. Where do they occur on the molecule? Let's number the parent chain. 
Again, we have two possible directions for numbering. We will select the one that gives a substituent occurring soonest. If we number right to left, we get something on carbon 4. If we number left to right, we get something on carbon 3. 3 is less than 4, so we number left to right. The methyl is on carbon 3, and the ethyl is on carbon 5. Now we are ready to write the name. With two substituents to list, it is time to learn another rule. We always list the substituents in alphabetical order, regardless of their position on the molecule. Here, that will mean ethyl before methyl, because E comes before M alphabetically. So we get 5-ethyl-3-methyl-octane. Now, for another example, let's make a slight modification to this molecule and add a methyl group on carbon-4. This means there are two methyl groups on this molecule. When there are multiple occurrences of the same substituent, we report them all at the same time, simply by listing multiple numbers and adding a prefix to indicate how many of that substituent there are. In this case, that will be 3,4-dimethyl. Another important rule is that these prefixes, whether di for 2, tri for 3, tetra for 4, and so forth, will not be considered when listing substituents in alphabetical order. In other words, it is still E for ethyl before M for methyl instead of D for dimethyl going first. That gives us 5-ethyl-3-4-dimethyl octane. Notice that in between numbers there is a comma, and in between a number and a letter is a hyphen, with no spaces anywhere. So that's a basic introduction to IUPAC nomenclature. There are many more rules to learn, and many more functional groups to go over, but everything will build on these basic principles we have just discussed. If things seem confusing, make sure to practice. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.